Welcome back friends. So, um, we are done with uh, American poetry and today we will be doing American drama. We will be talking about the uh, growth of uh, uh, American drama and the greats of American drama and of course, the masterpieces of American drama along with the practice test as we have been doing all along. So, uh, so I have written some of the terms and names here. Uh, this is not all we are going to do, but perhaps these are uh, some new names, new concepts for you. So, you should know Aristotle and his poetics, we will be referring to it. We will be talking about uh, the Greek, Grecian concept of uh, Dionysus uh, and the development of tragedy there. And then early realistic theatre, who were the exponents of realism in early American theatre, people like James A. Hearn, Edward Harrigan and William Gillette. So, these are the names that I have written just so that uh, uh, you get a better understanding of uh, the names and terms, but there will be more. So, you should know that drama uh, started uh, um, thousands of years ago. The origin of the dramatic form can be traced back to the 4th century BC. That was uh, the time around which uh, Aristotle had written his poetics. Greek drama originated with choral that is chorus singing celebrations in honor of the god Dionysus and for a long time it was a religious pageant and the choric element like lots of people is, uh, in a crowd is standing and commenting and singing. Uh, this element was used later on in the plays of many American dramatists such as Eugene O'Neill, Arthur Miller, also Tennessee Williams and Thornton Wilder. Um, in poetics Aristotle that was in 4th century BC, he uh, that is what we believe that he is this is the first or foremost work on dramaturgy and he laid down his famous theory of tragedy. Those of you who do not know should look it up Aristotle's theory of tragedy and his concepts of tragedy influenced the drama of the western world for centuries. So, that was uh, uh, the template that has been practiced by not just the American playwrights, but also the great British playwrights including Marlowe and Shakespeare, the Elizabethan great. So, the, uh, uh, the Grecian model and template of tragedy. Um, Theatre in uh, America started with uh, uh, adaptations of the great British plays and also um, uh, musicals, farce, burlesque. So, how did we reach the stage of realism in American theatre? Now, in by the time um, when America became an independent nation, okay, that was the 18th century and uh, by mid mid uh, 18th century or sorry by mid 19th century, um, there was a discernible element of realism in the works of playwrights such as and I have written the early realists James Hearn, Edward Harrigan and William Gillett. They were primarily influenced by the works of Henrik Ibsen and Bernard Shaw. So, Ibsen we have already touched upon, Shaw we are going to do in uh, when we reach the uh, last legs of or last leg of this course. And these writers along with Herman Sunderman, they were all known for their realistic playwrights. So, the budding American playwrights look towards the European models for their aesthetics. Uh, the plays of James A. Hearn for example, uh, and he wrote a famous play uh, famous for those times perhaps is uh, no longer in fashion nowadays. Margaret Fleming, it was written in 1890, was uh, quite close to the everyday lives of the common people. Um, there was also a very successful uh, production of uh, David Belasco's romantic tragedy called Madame Butterfly, which was uh, uh, performed in 1900, uh, which was written with John Luther Long. Okay. So, uh, th those were the early plays. So, they experimented with all genres. 
the European modernist movements entered the American theatre just before the first world war through the little theatres founded in imitation of the independent theatres of Europe and brought to America new ideas in set design, acting and uh, also in uh, techniques. So, one of the first and foremost um, uh, of these uh, theatres was the little theatre and its uh, ancillary called province town players. This organization started performing in 1915 in province town and existed till 1929. It was founded by a non-theatrical group of writers and artists um, who wanted to come up with originally American. They see that was the buzzword that we ha they had to write American plays and they have to experiment with various themes and techniques. The group developed the works of writers such as Eugene O'Neill. So, province town theater O'Neill started his career with that and other included Edna St. Vincent Millay, Paul Green and Floyd Dell. Some of the other important uh, figures included uh, Mary Hitton Wars, George Cram Cook, Susan Glaspell, Wilbur Steele, Robert Edmund Jones and Hutchins Hapgood. Now, most of these playwrights I know they are no longer read, but you need to know the history of American drama. So, those were the early well known writers success, success, uh, successful and well known. Now, Theatre Guild was the next major organization after the Provincetown players. Essentially, it evolved out of the Washington Square players. It was founded in New York by someone called Lawrence Langer in 1918 and was committed to produce high quality non-commercial plays from America and also from other parts of the world. American playwrights whose works were produced included uh, by then they had established Pulitzer and all and uh, they uh, there were Pulitzer Prize winners such as Sidney Howard, Maxwell uh, Anderson, Robert Sherwood and William Saroen. All these playwrights are still read and still performed. The Theatre Guild contributed to American musical theatre by producing plays such as Porgy and Bess by George Gershwin, Ira Gershwin and Du Bois Hayward. So, the Gershwins were extremely important and well known and they are still remembered with great respect especially by filmmakers such as Woody Allen. He often uses uh, their symphonies and their sound uh, and their music in his soundtracks. The group theatre was the next important organization formed in 1931 by Harold Klurman, Cheryl Crawford and Lee Stressburg, all extremely influential names who went on to influence a generation of playwrights and actors. The aim was to present and this is important, the group wanted to present American plays with a social message, so uh, plays with social relevance. A typical group production was a social protest play and often with a leftist viewpoint. All these are important terminologies and you should know that. The first attempt of the group was the production of Sergei Tretyakov's Road China followed by Paul Green's House of Connelly and next came two anti-capitalist plays. 1931 by Claire and Paul Sifton and success story by John Howard Lawson. All these plays had uh, a very distinctive leftist uh, overtone or touch. The group's first major success came with Sidney Kingsley's Men in White which won a Pulitzer Prize. It was a 1933 play. Men in White and the next important organization was Federal Theatre Project. The group soon gave way to uh, WPA, something called WPA, uh, the abbreviation stands for Work, uh, Works Progress Administration. FTP or Federal Theatre Project was a project that was to have a major cultural impact in America through its various art projects for writers artists, musicians and performers. It was an initiative of President Franklin D. Roosevelt, FDR. Its purpose was to create jobs for unemployed artists, 
particularly theatrical people in the depression years um, that lasted from 1935, uh, started in 1929, but uh, particularly uh, the um, group and FTP, they were, they addressed the uh, needs of uh, the artists during 1935 to 1939. Several of the productions included classical as well as modern drama, puppet shows, musical and also children's plays and there was also a documentary theatre known as Living Newspaper. FTP also staged plays by young unknown American playwrights and also uh, um, supported black American theatre. The FTP was terminated in 1939 uh, due to the investigations led by uh, Joseph McCarthy and his House Committee on Un-American Activities. That is the, uh, you know, so for the first 70, 80 years, this is what was happening to American drama. We will be talking more about uh, the major historical uh, landmarks in American drama, but before that, let us begin with our practice test. So, please look at the slide here. Question 1. E. H. Southern, Richard Mansfield and the Barrymore's John, Ethel and Lionel were well known. A. Producers, B. Set designers, C. Playwrights, D. Actors. Next question. In 1714 in America, the first play ever to be written and published was A. An adaptation of Cleopatra by an anonymous playwright. B. Robert Hunter's Androborus uh, Bogo uh, Fickle, biographical farce in three acts frogs. C. Uh, Royal Tyler's The Contrast. D. Mercy Otis Warren's The Group. Question 3. Which play was written by Maxwell Anderson and Lawrence Stallings? You know, jointly written play. A. The Prince of Parthia. B. The Contrast. C. What Price Glory? D. The Plain Dealer. Number 4. Dash was a ballad opera from England and was very popular on that stage. A. Tara, B. Flora, C. Florentina, D. Madonna. Next, question 5. The King and I and South Pacific were collaborated on by, see these are famous musicals, The King and I and South Pacific. Later on there were great movies also based on these uh, musicals, The King and I particularly with Yul Briner. So, A. Alaya Kazan and Tennessee Williams, B. Richard Rogers and Oscar Hammerstein, C. Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers, D. Gene Kelly and Donald O'Connor. Number 6. Dash, America's most influential theatre journal was founded in 1916 to spread the new ideas, new ideas of theatre. A. Theatre Arts Magazine, B. Little Theatre Magazine, C. Theatre Praxis, D. Drama. Next one, Susan Glespell's 1917 play Dash is a satire on the growing popularity of Freud's theory of psychoanalysis. Which play? A. Desiring women, B. Suppressed desires, C. The hospital, D. Freud and Young. Next one, They knew what they wanted is a realistic play by A. Arthur Miller, B. Max Anderson, C. Sidney Howard, D. S. N. Berman. Number 9. The case of Clyde Griffiths was produced by A. Theatre Guild, B. Little Theatre, C. Province Town Players, D. Group Theatre. Next, Robert Anderson is best remembered for his 1948 play. Which one? A. T N Sympathy, B. Another Part of the Forest, C. Boundaries for Cardiff, D. The Case of Clyde Griffiths. 11. The Climbers and the City were placed by a. Sherwood Anderson, B. Clyde Fitch, C. Paul Sifton, D. John Howard Lawson. Number 12. Which among the following plays is about cannibalism? A. Suddenly Last Summer, B. A Streetcar Named Desire, C. Fences, D. A View from the Bridge. Number 13. Which among the following plays by O'Neill has a strong autobiographical tones? A. The Iceman Cometh, B. Long Day Journey Into Night, 
see Emperor Jones the mourning becomes Electra. Number 14, which one of the following plays of Arthur Miller has shades of autobiographical or has autobiographical shades? A. Broken Glass, B. The Crucible, C. After the Fall, D. All My Sons. All these are Arthur Miller plays, one of them has very strong autobiographical elements, which one? Number 15, George and Martha are the principal characters in A. Who is afraid of Virginia Woolf? B. American Dream, C. The Zoo Story, D. The Price. Next, which classic Hollywood film did Clifford Audits collaborate on? A. Some Like It Hot, B. It Happened One Night, C. On the Waterfront, D. The Sweet Smell of Success. Now, Clifford Audits, we are going to do more of him very soon and he was one of the greatest ever American playwrights. Like most um, intellectuals of that time, Audits also dabbled in Hollywood and uh, had worked on quite a few films and one of his films on which he collaborated, an iconic film is here. Number 17. Name the dramatist who collaborated with Alfred Hitchcock on Shadow of a Doubt. A. Eugene O'Neill, B. Clifford Audit, C. Tennessee Williams, D. Thornton Wilder. Next, which one of the following plays is supposedly based on Tennessee Williams family? A. Streetcar Named Desire, B. Sweet Bird of Youth, C. Petrified Forest, D. The Glass Menagerie. Number 19, name the author, launched as an artistic movement in France by Dash, by, you have to write the author's name, manifesto on surrealism in 1924, surrealism can be considered an offshoot of Dadaism. So, who is the author of manifesto on surrealism? A. Samuel Beckett, B. Andre Breton, C. August Strindberg, D. Eugene Ionesco. Number 20. Name the playwright of Come Back Little Sheba, Picnic and Bus Stop. Great plays of the 50s. A. Edward L. B. B. Tennessee Williams, C. Sherwood Anderson, D. William Inge. Next one, you have to identify the playwright to whom we attribute these quotes. I cannot and will not cut my conscience to fit this year's fashions. Cynicism is an unpleasant way of saying the truth. People change and forget to tell each other. Who said these? A. Elia Kazan, B. Clifford Audit, C. Arthur Miller, D. Lillian Hellman. Number 22. And of the thousand days, Elizabeth the Queen, the mask of kings are plays by a. Kurt Will, B. Maxwell Anderson, C. Sherwood Anderson, D. Robert Anderson. Number 23. In which cele uh, celebrated play do you find Grandma, Mommy and Daddy? These are the characters and these are the names. They do not have other names. They are very archetypal characters. A. The Zoo Story, B. A Delicate B Balance, C. American Dream, D. The Three Tall Women. Next one, identify the play. Published and produced in 1935, this melodramatic depression era tale of frustrated lives and spiritual emptiness is set in a gas station and lunch room along an Arizona highway. Gabby, the daughter of the station's owner, is unhappy with her life in the desert and longs to go to Paris to paint. She falls in love with Alan Square, a failed author who stops at the restaurant on his way to California and proposes elopement. Everything changes when the escaped criminal Duke Manti arrives and holds them hostage. 24. A. There shall be no night. B. The petrified forest. C. Awake and sing. D. Look homeward angel. Identify the play. Ten citizens carted off to a detention center are forced to wait outside. One by one, they are summoned by a doctor for examination. The circumcised won't be released, their papers verified. As they wait, scraps of gossips are exchanged. 
tempers fly which play your choices are a the crucible b a memory of two mondays c the iceman cometh d incident at vishi let's discuss the answers so the first one d uh, first is d e h southern richard mansfield and barry moss that is john ethel and lionel they were well known actors so answer is d number 2 the answer is b first american play robert hunter's androboros a biographical farce in three x frogs its first american play and number 3 is c what price glory number 4 is b flora was a ballad opera from england and was very popular on american stage so flora and number 5 is richard rogers and oscar hammerstein that's the answer the king and i and south, south pacific were collaborated on by richard rogers and oscar hammerstein number 6 is a the first uh, influential important uh, theater journal was theater arts magazine founded in 1916 to the job was to spread awareness about theater and its ideas and number 7 b susan glaspell's 1917 play suppressed desires satire on the growing popularity of freud's theory of psychoanalysis 8 is c they knew what they wanted is a realistic play by sydney howard and number 9 is d the case of clyde griffiths which was published by oh sorry produced by group theater the case of clyde griffiths number 10 a robert anderson is best remembered for his 1948 play t and sympathy number 11 is b the climbers 1901 and the city 1909 were played by clyde fitch and number 12 again is a suddenly last summer by tennessee williams this is a play about cannibalism number 13 is b long day journey into night which is uh, which o'neil based on his own family his father was a great actor and the uh, the hero the patriarch of uh, long day journey into night and uh, uh, their sons their family the wife they are all based on the o'neil family and arthur miller's uh, strongly autobiographical tones is not the crucible as many would assume but it's after the fall so answer is c after the fall the crucible is an allegory of the mccarthy period after the fall is based on his own um Uh, you know family his relationship with his mother and his women particularly um, his first wife mary mary slattery and also uh, one of the most glamorous and famous women in the history marilyn monroe so after the fall is based on his relationship with marilyn monroe and his other family members number 15 a george and martha are the principal characters in Edward Elby's Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf and number 16 is D Clifford Audits collaborated on The Sweet Smell of Success starring Burt Lancaster and Tony Curtis one of the most uh, you know iconic films of the classic hollywood period number 17 is D Thornton Wilder the playwright dramatist who collaborated with alfred hitchcock on his shadow of a doubt number 18 is d the glass menagerie tennessee williams family number 19 is b andre breton the answer is andre breton the author of manifesto on surrealism number 20 is d come back little sheba bus stop picnic uh, is william inch and uh, he also collaborated with the great alaya kazan on splendor in the grass number 21 is d the courts are by lillian hellman one of the greatest american female playwright american playwright but she was a woman and number 22 all the historical plays 
by Maxwell Anderson B. And of the thousand days, Elizabeth the Queen, the mask of kings are placed by Maxwell Anderson. Number 20, 23, C, Edward Elby's American Dream, Grandma, Mommy and Daddy. Number 24 is B, The Petrified Forest by Robert Sherwood, answer is B. And number 25 is D, Incident at Vichy by Arthur Miller. It is a play, it is an anti-Semitic play where um, Mm, no. I mean addressing the issue of anti-Semitism, not an anti-Semitic play, but it's a, it addresses the issue of anti-Semitism in the uh, Nazi occupied Vichy, which was a French territory. Before we wind up today's class, I would like you to take a look at the glass menagerie. Here is the link and uh, the hero. Tom and uh, Tom's character, uh, the, the son's character is played by the great John Malkovich. So, one of the greatest plays and enacted by one of the greatest actors of our time. So, thank you very much and we will meet uh, and continue very, uh, with American dramas in our next class.